God is looking for vessels to manifest his son in to the depths to the depths to walk as he walked because when it's released the church enters into a corporate grace to walk as he walked and to love as he loved first John says walk as Jesus walked well we're going to get to do that and we are going to know the heights and depths and width and length of his love and we're going to flesh it out for the whole world glory that's what the bible calls glory when we manifest christ i tell you the season of our ministries it's over it's the hour of christ and the corporate manifestation of him in us desperately seeking for authentic because we have so many ideas right now in the western world of what it means to be an apostle if you can gather a big conference you're an apostle if you have five pastors who report to you you're an apostle you're an apostle everyone wants to be an apostle i just know that what's presently out there is far short of what god wants to bring us into right now we would be hard pressed to name 10 people names real people on the earth who we could say when they come into a city a city gets nervous about their presence it'd be hard to find 10 thank god for reinhard bonke praise god outside of that it would be hard pressed that when two people come into a city like act 17 they would say oh no who are shaking the world and turning it upside down preaching another Caesar, another king, Jesus, and when they do, power breaks out and disrupts all the systems. A witness is released with such power that the city converts or they throw them in jail. We'd be hard pressed to name 10 on the whole earth and yet everyone has a puzzle on their business card. There's something wrong with that. Seriously wrong. We have to understand the context is crucial to produce the apostolic witness on the earth because it's coming again God's going to bring it forth but he's going to bring it forth in Christ rooted and grounded in him the manifestation of his life in earthen vessels Jesus sets the context in Matthew 24 they ask him they say tell us what are the signs of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered, he says, you must take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. That false prophets are coming with these false Christ. What is the authentic signs of the apostolic ministry? Because you want to know who to follow. You want to know the word of the Lord. You want to hear. Paul says, I plead with you. He says, here is how I'm coming to you. Here is the heart I'm bringing. It's one of meekness and gentleness of Christ. I'm a bond servant of Christ and he's madly in love with you. And I'm coming in his meekness and his gentleness. It's genuine authority is carried with meekness and gentleness, lowliness. It's carried lightly. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27, he says, I have all authority. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. I have it all. I have the greatest amount of authority that's ever been given to a human being, ever, and always will. My Father's given me all things. I have all power. Power over realms. Power over revelation. I have all authority. He knows who he is and where he's going. He knows his identity, therefore what? He takes the towel and washes the feet. Authority always should lead you into gentleness and into servanthood. Authority never should lead you into the right to use it, condescending or overlording over someone. Yet it shall not be so among you. 
But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. Do you think Jesus embellished that? This is actually a principle of my kingdom. A throne will be established in righteousness and justice and in love and mercy. He says, do you really want it? He says, because this is the way it is. You mean a slave of all? He says, you'll be the slave just like I'm going to be the slave. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served. Oh, if we could get it in our minds, Jesus does not exaggerate. He never exaggerates. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give His life as a ransom for many. on he says let me tell you he says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal he said I don't fight in the flesh you want to know how I fight I fight in the realm of virtue he said my weapons are mighty they pull down strongholds what are those strongholds of sin and demons and perversion I manifest the knowledge of Christ in me it's more than a good Bible study. It's a manifestation of Christ in us. Responding in righteousness. Responding in mercy. Covering. Gratefulness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Long-suffering. He says, these are my weapons, and they pull down strongholds. A generation could get hold of virtue. The power of Christ in us, bringing with Him all the hope of glory to come. The indwelling Christ manifesting His own life in us to be divine participants. All to partake of the divine nature. He says, my weapons are mighty. Every time I respond in love, I'm pulling things down over that congregation and you don't even know it. I'm winning. Says you don't have any idea what true weapons are. We cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Beloved, this is words and more than words. Bringing every thought into captivity to obedience to Christ. Says, Let me tell you what true warfare is. It's holiness. He says, the battle is over. He said, the one who manifests the nature of Christ wins. Righteousness in the inward parts. The battle's over. To really buy in that there's something greater than a platform. It's virtue. It's had the fragrance of God resting on our frames. It's that in gentleness and meekness, the life of Christ would come forth. That we would edify all. That we'd be a slave to all. Oh, if we would really believe to be a slave to all. The foolishness to the world, but the wisdom of God. 